best, also done by Canberra, by 18 minutes. Without the help of an RAF Sunderland, which took the exploration party and stores out to Greenland, the expedition couldn't have been carried out. Now, with more supplies, the aircraft was off again from Pembroke Dock on its way to Greenland to bring the party home. The flight took them over the Irish coast and on towards Iceland. The first stop was at the Icelandic capital, Reykjavik, but the flying boat was soon on its way again and incidentally flying into strong winds which upset its timetable. A halt was made at Ella Island where the RAF men met a number of Danes who wished them luck in their task of making contact with the explorers. Then on again over the glaciers and ice-capped mountains of Greenland a most inhospitable scene and a difficult land, you'd think, in which to rendezvous a party of four men. Coming down on Seal Lake, the explorer's base, they saw the glacier the men had had to cross and their tent. Wing Commander Barrett and his crew found the base deserted, the tent empty. It seemed the rendezvous had failed. Then, hurrying to meet them, came Commander Simpson, leader of the exploration party, and all was well. Presently, the others arrived, and what with their gear and their beards, they certainly looked like explorers. The whole expedition, a scientific reconnaissance, had proved a great success, and when the party landed at Pembroke Dock, they looked as spick and span as if they'd never even seen Greenland's icy mountains.